Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the basics of coroutines and just how you can start them and stop them. First, I'm going to show the old method, and then I'm going to show the new way to do it. So to give a quick example of what we'll see here, I'll just press play, and when I hit 1, I start a counter that keeps counting up and updating this text, and I can hit 2 to stop it, or I can hit 1 to just cause it to restart. It's a pretty simple system, so let's take a look at how it works. The first sample I'm going to open up is the one that uses strings. Now this is the old method for starting and stopping coroutines and I'd recommend that you don't use it but I want to show it so you can get an idea of what it looks like. So here I just have a reference to the text field that we're updating and then in the update we just check to see if the user presses 1, 2, or 3. If they press 1 what we do is call stop coroutine and we pass the name of the method that we want to stop. Right after that we're going to be starting it. So this stop method call is just to make sure that the coroutine isn't running twice. If I don't have this here and I just call start again, let me show you what happens. We'll actually run into the case of the coroutine starting multiple times. Here, let's watch. So there we go. One, two. You can see it's already acting weird, right? Because every frame it's updating between multiple numbers. But I have three here, which actually stops all coroutines. Let's take a quick look at that. So here if I hit three, it just does stop all coroutines. Now two is also the one to stop a single coroutine and it stops this count up routine. But since I had multiple running, I just hit three to clear them all. Now let's check out the coroutine real quick. It, with any coroutine, the return type has to be IE enumerator and it has to have a yield return statement in there somewhere. It doesn't have to be called necessarily, but it definitely has to be in the method and not calling it makes it kind of pointless to have a coroutine in the first place. So in this one we're just waiting for a tenth of a second, incrementing an integer, and then changing the text to the value that we incremented to. So this is the first method. Like I said, this works, but it has some drawbacks. For instance, if I rename this to the new count up routine and press play, or here I build, the build still works fine. I go in and press play, and nothing, right? Nothing works. Coroutine, count up routine couldn't be started because I renamed this and since it's a string, it is not, um, it, it's not automatically refactored. There's no compiler error. Uh, the other thing is getting um, parameters into here is a bit of a pain in the ass too. So if you wanna pass in parameters to your coroutine, you can't easily do it. I mean, you can do it, but it's not, it's extra work. So let's jump over to the new version. So if I go over to this second version, here again I have the text field to update. And I also have a reference to an IE numerator just called count up. This is just a private IE numerator field in here. Now in the update method, when we press one, what I do now is just check to see if count up is not equal to null. If it's not equal to null, I call stop coroutine and pass in this IE numerator. So this is how we'll stop the coroutine, and we only have to do it if it's actually running. Now on line 19 here, I do count up equals count up routine, which again is the same exact method, right? So I assign the IE numerator right there, and then I call start coroutine on count up. And then this launches the coroutine, but I now have a reference to it that I can stop and kill right here. So again, if I hit two, I just can stop the count up routine. And here I'm not doing the null check. I could do it, but it doesn't make a difference. It'll still work fine without it. And then stop all coroutines also works fine with this method. So if you're using coroutines, this is the method that I would recommend you use if you need to stop it. If it's something you never need to stop, you could just call something like start coroutine count up routine. Oops, or, or just like that. So you could call it just like this if you're never going to need to stop it. But the second you think that you may need to stop it, consider just creating a reference to your I enumerator and then using that to stop it instead of having some other check inside the coroutine. Of course, if you need to do a system where you just do a check inside the coroutine, you can do that as well. Let me show that real quick before we wrap this up. So do start coroutine, do like count up routine. All right, and I'm gonna get rid of both of those lines for now. Now, if we just want this thing to run for a couple seconds, like a set time, we could do something with the elapsed time count up, but that would probably not work very well because our 
time dot delta time in this yield with the wait for seconds is going to be a bit off. It's not going to work right. So what we would want to do for a timer is set something like uh, we'll do float start time equals time dot time, and then here we can do a check if time dot time minus start time is greater than oh let's just go for five seconds then we can break so if you want to do a quick timer in here and break out after an amount of time this is the way to do it let's jump back over watch that one more time got the right coroutine manager enabled hit play and let it run we should stop right around 50 a uh, 44 okay so that's good so this is how you would set it up um, if you have questions about coroutines, of course, feel free to ask below in the comments section. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to like and hit subscribe, and thanks for watching.